afternoon, everybody. My name is Henry. I'm here to talk about effective ch effecting change through listening. Many of us be, uh, sitting here are change makers. And when we want to make change, we have a lot of passion. I'll say that a defining characteristic of a change maker is somebody who have a very strong view on what they want to see in the world, and they go in to try to make that change. A bit more about myself. I started as a volunteer since I was a student. In 2015, I was elected member of parliament in an area called Kebun Baru. Kebun Baru is a constituency with 40,000 residents. And like many other uh, places, we have the needy among our midst. And what I do is that together with hundreds of volunteers and professional social workers, we try to help the needy. So today, I'm here to talk to you, not in my capacity as a member of parliament, but in my capacity, like you, being a change maker. Now, the traditional concept of change making is to come in guns blazing and effect change. But even at best, this approach has limitation. Why? Because even if we succeed, we are at best artificial crutches that the community would rely on, which means that if we exit from the scene, the change might not be sustained. Rather, I see a better way of effecting change is for us as change makers to come in Unleash the energy within the community. Unleash it because within the community is not just the needy, but the capacity for change and the wisdom to do that. And the way to unleash this is by listening. By listening to our beneficiaries, by listening to the community, and by listening to the change makers within. Let me share with you a particular experience that I'm sure it resonates with many of you. One day, after a very long, extensive effort to distribute groceries to many of our needy, a few of our volunteers and myself sat down at a coffee shop. Suddenly, one of our volunteers, Marilyn, she said this, blurted this out unconsciously. Henry, how many cigarettes do we end up paying for today? Are we helping them or are we killing them? What does she mean by that? Well, some of you may be aware that we give out groceries, we grew up give out grocery vouchers to the needy in Singapore. But what sometimes happens in some cases is that some of the beneficiaries, they take that vouchers, that grocery voucher, and then they buy cigarettes, and then they buy beer, and they drink away and smoke away. So that kind of behavior made our volunteers disillusioned. They wonder whether or not they are helping the right people. They wonder whether they are helping people in the right way. So at that point, I tried to reassure them that we're doing things the right way. But in my heart of hearts, I do know that I had no answer. So then, I spent months working with my volunteers to experiment different ways, trials and errors. And we realized that the power is really through the power of listening. Three ways, listen to the community. Since 2015, I've gone through every household of Kebun Baru, my constituency, at least three times. When I go there and visit with my volunteers, what we do is, rather than just say hi and bye, we try to understand our neighbors, our residents, who lives there, what do they do, uh, who are the needy, 
among this block? Where are the socially isolated elderly staying? Where are the special needs children staying? Where are the uh, people with financial difficulties staying? And what we do is also to stock take the community resources. For example, where are the teachers staying? Who's the former policeman? Who's the taxi driver? Who are the nurses? Who wants to step forward and help our community? And when we have to understand the needs of our community, we then can come up with very specific programs. In the last one year, let me give you some examples. We came up with a free legal clinic for our residents. We came up with home delivery service of cooked food to the frail elderly. We came up with um, uplifting programs for the young poor. So, and many other more. But what is more precious than this program is it stems the flood of disillusionment among the volunteers. And we actually were dealing with a flood of volunteers coming in. And it also aligns everybody's vision because we as a group were out there listening to our community and we saw the community through the same lenses. So that was the first point about listening to the community. The second point I'd like to make is listening to the beneficiaries. This is a picture of Madam Izam. She's the lady in the middle. She has three, she's a single mother, she has three young kids, and she has an ailing mother on the other side. We started a program to help our young poor break out the poverty cycle. So what we do, we do, we try to make sure that they learn effective parenting uh, skills, they try to get good jobs, and then we try to make sure that the kids go to good kindergarten, uh, ensure that they go to after school care, make sure they have tuition. Sounds like a great idea, right? Except it really wasn't. Why do I say that? Because when we try to reach out to families like uh, Madam Izam's family, Many of them didn't want to come down. We called them, we visited them, we begged them. They just, just didn't come down. Then we went to Madam Izam and listened to her. And she shared with us her particular viewpoint. She is the sole caregiver of so many people in her family. And the reason why she's not down is because the kids do not want to come down. Therefore, what we did was, in response, design a kids program so that the parents are coming down and then there's somebody taking care of the kids. But then, the kids were not happy because they were really bored. So what we did is we experimented a lot to make sure that the kids had something interesting to do and eventually we found something that they liked, which is doing art. And then something beautiful happened. First, the kids enjoyed themselves then the kids bring and drag their parents down. Then the parents became good friends. And very soon, we found that we had a very strong support network of single mothers who supported each other. They even exercise every week together. And together, they want to be more than just beneficiaries, but they also be change makers. This is the picture of Madeline Izam after the program. Instead of being a beneficiary, she said that she wants to help. And this is her trying to man a store, sell, uh, passing free clothes to her neighbors who are needy. And this would not happen if we didn't listen to the beneficiaries. The third point I'm trying to make is that we must listen to the change maker within. As I was saying earlier, this is essential to unleash the power of the community. So within Kabumbaro, we instituted a new system where every new person, volunteer coming in, we have in-depth conversation with them to understand what change do, you, do they want to see in the world and how can we work with them to achieve that change. 
not just that, we also talk to our existing change makers and tap on their ideas to follow on the story about the program. I did mention that we have a fringe program for kids, right? After the program ended, the change makers came in through a post-mortem and told us that they want to do more. How? The original idea was that making sure that the kids from needy families have enough, can keep up through tuition, through, through uh, let's say, after-school care, through kindergarten. Actually, that was not good enough. Because if you start life too far away from the starting point, from the rest, just trying to keep up is not good enough. What my change makers told me was this. If you want them to truly fight their way past the poverty cycle, past the glass ceiling, we must inspire them through passion. And therefore, it is important to have a talent discovery and talent uh, a passion program so that they can, we can assemble a group of people talented in different spheres, organize the kids, find the talent in the kids so that that talent and that passion will propel them to fight through incredible odds in life. And so today, we are working on a program to do exactly just that, accumulating in a kids' camp and a kids' performance with the objective of not just letting the students, the kids, exhibit their talent, but more importantly, to allow their parents to see the passion and to be encouraged by that. This is a mock-up website of a new effort that we're doing. It is called Hope Collective. By and large, we have, by now, 15 ground-up initiatives focusing on social work in Kabum Baru. We feel that not just by listening, we have to empower our change makers. So we created this platform for residents to come in to think about all the causes they can volunteer. Also for fellow change makers to come in to understand what resources are available to change make. And we are also making sure that even for people who don't see a cause they're currently associated with, they have the two kits to come in and empower them and for the two kids to change the community. So some of these ideas that come out are, for example, they want to form a group called Tech for Good to use technology to help the community. Some of the programs that are coming up is also an incubation service for other change-making efforts from the ground up. And we are just getting started. So I'd like to conclude this story about listening by sharing with an interesting anecdote that I heard from another TED Talk. There's a TED Talk by an Italian changemaker. He was into developmental aid in Africa, and he was part of this group where they would transfer the best know-how from Italy to Zambia. So the Italians were extremely passionate about a particular cause, growing excellent, beautiful, big tomatoes. So they, they brought this wonderful idea over to the Zambians. And for some reasons, the Zambians didn't bite on this idea. But never mind, the change makers persisted. And in the end, they succeeded in growing big, fat, beautiful tomatoes until the hippos came in at all of them. Of course, the Italians were really upset with the hippos, and they asked the Zambians, why didn't you tell us that in Zambia, hippos eat tomatoes? Then the Zambians responded, but you didn't ask. You didn't ask is the same as saying, you're not listening. So all around the world, change makers are beginning to understand and tap on the power of listening. So I hope that when we go back after the talk today, whether or not we are trying to effect change in the community or in the business or in, in the personal space, 
when we want to do so, let's not charge in with our preconceived notion, but focus on listening because it matters and it will shape the way in which we want to change the world. And thank you so much for listening.